Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode of the newly titled John and Wendy Show. I am the John in that equation, the outlaw John Roca, joined as always by the Wendy in that equation. Wendy Lee, how are you? I'm doing so, so, so good. I blue dry my hair, so I feel all like nice and warm <laughs> right now. It's a little chilly today in LA. Nice. Yeah, I know. It's it's a little cold uh, and a little rainy here as well in San Diego. So I was surprised, really? by, surprised by that, but I'm I'm loving that it's happening. I'm, I'm, I went out and had breakfast and sat out in the rain under the awning and just listened to the rain. I love the sound of the rain. Well, so look at you, Mr. Living It Up. Yeah, moved me to breakfast, Seattle. Would listen That's to the rain. <laughs> It rains all the time. I think he gets so tired of it. I don't know. Maybe I guess I don't know. Move me to move me to England. Um, anyway, we are. Well, that that you would love. <laughs> You'd come back with a British accent. That's true. I would like Madonna. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're from Michigan. Uh, anyway. <laughs> We're back again today to talk about so many things going on uh, from the past week. So many of the big stories, talking about some trailers, talking about some uh, some stuff going, some uh, Transformers stuff. Some uh, we're going to do our, our last dual non-spoiler review uh, a little bit later on. There's some BTS drama going on. We're covering so many things here today. This is going to be an hour long show, only an hour long show because both of us have commitments after this. So we we thought we'd do the show, but only keep it to an hour today. So strap in and strap on. We're going to get this thing going. Uh, Wendy, uh, where shall we start off for first? I think we should start off with trailers because it really feels like mm. just everything got dumped in the trailer world. We got a new trailer for Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Mm -hmm. We got a final trailer for the upcoming Dune film. We have a trailer for House of Dragon. And I picked all of those because I know it kind of sits within the geekdom, yeah. um, but in different aspects because we've got you know, two book adaptation movies slash shows, and then we've got one video game. So I thought we we talk about it uh, a little bit, especially kind of going into that Resident Evil world, Welcome mm. to Raccoon City. I was a bit confused when I first saw it, the title pop up, because I thought, wait, is this the Netflix one? But then it's saying in, <laughs> it's in theaters. All right. So I was a bit confused. And this is the one separate from the Netflix one. This will be in theaters. Uh, we've got Claire in this. We've got Chris in this. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Damien Dark himself also in this, which I find hilarious. I, I don't even remember something. Mc, Mc, McDonald? Nope. I can't even remember the actor's name, mm -hmm. but I know him as Damien Dark. So, you know, we've gotten so many iterations of Resident Evil. Oh, Neil McDonough. Is that who you're trying to find? Yes. Neil McDonough? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just Dun -dun call him Damien Dark because. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you know, I feel like in the past, the Resident Evil movies have been fun, but I don't feel that they've stayed completely truthful mm -hmm. to the video games. So when I've heard about both of these reboots, essentially, where I was like, okay, are we gonna like follow the game this time though, like for Ooh. real, follow it, or are we gonna yeah. do our own thing? And what it looks like to me from this first trailer is that they are keeping it a lot more closely uh, related to the video game mm -hmm. than some of the previous movie <laughs> adaptations. What were your thoughts when you first uh, saw this Resident Evil trailer? Well, when I woke up that morning, I was like, there's a Resident Evil trailer. Do I do a trailer reaction? To that? Because I'm not, you know, the biggest Resident Evil, like no knowledgeable person. But I was like, you know what? If they're trying something new and I like Kaya Scudelario, uh, when I saw her in Crawl, I really became a fan of hers. So I'm like, okay, let's give this thing a shot. And it's got some good, interesting actors in it. Neil McDonough, Tom Hopper, um, and, you know, uh, Stephen Amell. So I was like, okay, let's see what we got here. Robbie. Uh, and I, and I'm oh, sorry, Robbie Amell. And, the, uh, the cousin. <laughs> right, the cousin. Yeah, Stephen is on heels. <laughs> my apologies. But yeah, I, I, was, I was like, all right, let's take a look at this thing. And I actually really liked the trailer. And I'll tell you, Wendy, when you watch a lot of horror trailers, you can see the ones that are made for like 10 bucks and the ones that legitimately have some care and attention brought to them. And this one feels like there's legitimate care and attention brought to this. Hannah John came and other actors being part of ghost from Ant-Man and Wasp, her being a part of this. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's a good young cast. And from what I understand, they're combining both the events of games one and uh, game one and game two together into one movie um, and I love the creature design. That is legitimately scary as hell. Uh, love that Neil McDonough might be coming, might be in essence the villain here. 
Tom Hopper apparently can't get away from umbrellas because the Umbrella Corporation, the Umbrella Academy is a part of that. <laughs> uh, so to me, a lot of this really, really worked and excites me actually to go see this thing and review it because I did watch, I think, four of the Resident Evil movies. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a law of diminishing returns on those. But I liked the world they were creating. And then it just got a little too cheesy for me. And I didn't want to go back. But this yeah, got a little like out a of hand. Right? Yeah. This looks like a whole new approach, a grounded approach. We're going back in time. So I like it. I thought it was a really cool approach. And the director, I didn't, I haven't seen 47 meters down the series, uh, but looks like he's doing a nice job, at least from this trailer of uh, giving this thing some, some uh, weight. And I like that. Yeah, same here. When I saw it, I was actually kind of surprised. Mm. I was like, oh, I actually enjoyed this one. But I also set the bar very low for myself to be like, let's not be disappointed. You know, you love right. the game, but just because it's a good video game doesn't make it a good video game movie. But maybe right. this is going to be the one to do it. Just I think they just have to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. You just keep it simple. You just follow the source material, which is why the fans wants to come out and watch the movies because they play the game. They enjoy the characters in the story. And they want to see it told right. on the big screen. So yeah. when you change too much and you screw with that, you know, the lore, then it's like, well, then it's not it's not as good. I mean, and I'm not saying you can't go away from it, but you right. got to make it make sense. You can't just make it different because you want it to be different. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. So. Yeah, there is that. And then I couldn't wait to dive into this next trailer because I thought of you when I was watching it mm. uh, for House of Dragon. Oh, yeah. We're, we're getting hooped or should I say pulled right back into the world <laughs> of Westeros. Just when they thought <laughs> you're out, they get you right back in. They give yeah. you Matt Smith in a blonde wig. <laughs> Um, yeah. So this is set, I think, two or three hundred years before the events of years, um, yeah. what we've known doo -doo 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 -doo, before all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be interesting because it does focus on the Targaryens. Not to say that it's only Tar Targaryens. We obviously saw other house sigils. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw a little bit of the Lannister and I think I saw like the Stark, the, the banner somewhere. But this is going mm -hmm. to be... If we know anything about the Targaryens, there's going to be a lot of politics, which I love in the show. Right. And maybe dragons. Yeah. Maybe dragons. And and kind of, I want to see how they got to where dragons didn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it seems to be that's what the approach to this one is. And having George R. R. Martin as one of the executive producers and co-creators of the show I think is a really good thing and a positive thing to get people back on board with the going with, because I get it. a lot of people are probably have PTSD from that series and don't want to go back into <laughs> watching another game of Thrones series. Cause they were so disappointed by how that thing ended. But this is a, this is so smart. 200 years before none of those characters were going to see in this one. We'll see their ancestors, but we won't see them. And so this is a good way to approach it. We, the dragons are going to be a very strong part of this thing. So we're going to have that. Is it going to lead to that civil war, the dance of the dragons later on in this, uh, in this first season, we shall see. And we see all the houses there, the Tarleys, the, the Lannisters, uh, um, uh, the Targaryens, all of the houses are there. So you can see how they're going to battle these things out and uh, what's going to happen. The Hand of the King stuff was great. We get the Blackfire mm -hmm. Sword, which is made of Valerian steel. The Iron yes. Throne looked completely new and awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so much of it, it was like, as you said, Wendy, so much of it sucked me back in. And now I, I'm definitely doing a, 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 a episode per episode review of that show because I'm looking forward oh, to Oh, you it. have to. And I have to read this book. I've got to get my hands on this book and read it for sure uh, and have some fun with it and compare the two as we're watching it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be really interesting because we're not going to even hear any of the names that we already know. Right. Um, right. You know, especially like, you know, because they, they all came, all the characters came later. So you're not mm -hmm. going to hear, you know, a Daenerys. You're not going to hear an Arya Stark or right. anything right. like that. So it's going to be so interesting. You don't even have to have watched all eight seasons of game of thrones i don't think if that's you a great want point to go right yeah. into this yeah and i hope they do that i hope they approach it in a way of getting new fans into it who have maybe not watched game of thrones because of some of the backlash from season eight this is a way mm -hmm. of getting new introduce the world all over again and have enough 
uh, winks to the people who've watched see all eight seasons there within the introduction. I think that's the way to do it. That's an excellent point, Wendy. Make sure they uh, make it open to everybody, even if they haven't seen an episode of Game of Thrones. That would be smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So looking forward to it. You know, it's the whole reason why I even have HBO in the first place <laughs> was to watch Game of Thrones. And after season eight, I was like, I should probably just cancel it, and then just kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> and I'm kind of glad I didn't cancel it because there's been so many cool shows right. that's come on to HBO that I've been introduced to. Uh, but it's you know definitely there's no reason to cancel it now with yeah. this show coming back in 2022 absolutely absolutely so one Good. more trailer left on the list and that's yeah. the final dune trailer and mm. that film comes out i believe the 22nd of october or something like that yeah no uh, uh, yeah no, no yeah 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 right yeah it's right around Can't the corner remember yes. and honestly every single piece of clip trailer whatever that they've reposter Anything mm -hmm. that they've released having to do with this movie, Dune, has been absolutely gorgeous. I've not seen a single bad shot in this. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to see it in theaters and definitely going in blind because uh, I know very little about Dune. And I kind of prefer it that way yeah. for this viewing because then afterwards, um, I've already downloaded the book onto my Audible library. So I'm going to be uh, checking that out after the film. Um, and since this movie is going to only cover the first half of the book, I will be able to get through yeah. the whole book the way before, you know, the second half of Dune comes out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I just think it's really just aesthetically you look at it and you're like, wow, that's a that's a theatrical experience right there. Yeah. 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 There was certainly more um, in this final trailer than we've gotten before. In terms of the war aspects and the battle aspects, I mean, the, those ships that look like dragonflies, that was badass. Um, even the line that he delivers in the previous trailer, he's like, you know, the dreams are nice, but the real world is where things happen. It looked a little bit more like a council line as opposed to a ball busting line like it was in the last trailer with between mm -hmm. Momoa and Chalamet, which I really like. And we get more of Oscar Isaac. He's clearly yes. going to have more to do here. He's clearly going to be more involved in the battle and, and what have you um, in there. And then I think Zendaya's line at the end where she's like, you know, this is just the beginning. That's a little bit of a warning to the audience. Hey, this is a two part movie. So this is just the first part. And then we're going to shoot the second part. It's going to come out. So just understand that this is the first part, the beginning. And then we're going to get to the real insane stuff here in the second movie. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm seeing it on Monday. So, um, I, I, yeah. So I'm just like, oh, okay. I want to love it. I want to love it. I don't want to be disappointed. So we shall see in the long run what, what it, uh, uh, plan what it what it comes to be but i like this trailer this was so much fun the armor all of it chalamet was so strong throughout the trailer so i'm excited what did you think overall? yeah I'm, I'm super excited for this and just being being i think it's really refreshing being very like excited about a property that's mm. definitely well known um but like knowing nothing of it other than the trailer and just getting ready to be mesmerized by the world that they're going to yeah. show us in this film Right. I yeah. can't Great. wait. <laughs> and that's it for trailer talk for today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, just a quick reminder, everybody, if you want to send in some uh, Streamlabs support, please feel free to do so. You see the address there on the uh, on the uh, screen, and it's also in the description. Oh, well, is it in the description? I guess you can't do a description for these, but I'll figure that out as we go along here as we're switching over to Twitch. But yeah, you see it there oh, right. on the screen. So I may put it up as a little banner here. If you want to send some support, again, we're only doing an hour-long episode today, so if you want to send your support, get it in now so we can answer your question here on the show. Thanks to everybody who's joining us. We have like 13 of y'all hanging out. And shout out to Darren Wright, who's in here. Darren, Thanks so much for this shirt from last year. Send it to me on my birthday, my Liverpool shirt. I appreciate it madly. Oh, cool. So shout out to you. Uh, but my birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks, Darren. So get on another present. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. Let's move on to our, what's our next thing, Wendy. Oh, my God. <laughs> what's wrong with you? I know. Why I would know. you say that? So much. So much. <laughs> They're going to be like, I'm not giving him anything. And not shit, man. Earn it. Nothing. <laughs> All right. Where shall we run to next, Wendy, here? Moving on to, let's talk a little bit about Foundation. This is the newest oh, yeah. uh, show to arrive, one of the newest shows to arrive on Apple TV+. Plus, and already, um, lots of positive reviews. A lot of people are loving it. So mm -hmm. it's been renewed for a season two. I feel like these days we're, we're hearing shows getting renewed for two, three seasons left and right at, yeah. all at once. 
And I think that's really great. I think that goes to show that, you know, people are consuming and watching these. Mm -hmm. The number must be good enough for them to want to do it. Because one of the things I really like about Apple TV productions is that they like they have the budget and you can tell Mm -hmm. that they have the budget. Oh, yeah. Especially with uh, Foundation. So I I barely uh, dove into episode one. I had to stop because I had to go somewhere. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be late if I keep watching this episode. But I am uh, intrigued. And we know that this show is based on the novel of the same name. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot, obviously a lot of the fans tuning into this one as well. So I hope that, um, you know, they're four episodes in and already is getting renewed. So I, they have six more episodes, I believe, yeah. uh, left to air. So I think that's going to be really exciting for both fans of the book and the new audiences who is watching the show. Yeah. Have you watched? Uh, no, I've gone to, I've set aside time to watch it later today. Uh, my girlfriend nice. doesn't, go, doesn't come back from LA until 930. So once I uh, finish the stuff that I'm doing, I'm going to put that on and watch as many episodes as I can. They sent me some swag. So one of the publicists was like, yeah. hey, are you going to do a review of the show? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. Sorry about that. I'll take a look and catch up and watch it. But I'm looking forward because I like Jared Harris. I like a lot of the actors involved here and certainly reading some Clean of the pace. reviews. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So her, she's fantastic. But seeing, seeing some of the uh, uh, reviews have been great. So it gets me excited to watch it. Um, and man, I'm still working through Star Wars Visions. So I, I got to finish <laughs> Foundation. Then I'm going to finish Visions tomorrow. And then I'm all caught up with the stuff I should be watching. So, uh, my yeah, goodness. there you go. So much stuff to watch. I know <laughs> my really brain is like very full, very, very full right now. But I, I at least finish a uh, Squid Game. So there's, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get into that too, as well, as well. Dude, you're gonna yeah. want to overnight binge that. It's... Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Shit. it's real right. good. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we ripped through Only Murders, and it's almost done. And I'm loving that. So I've got to jump on. That's the one with on um, David. With Steve Martin and Martin Short Steve and the uh, Martin Short and Selena Gomez. Selena yes. Gomez, yeah, it's so so good. So people need it's to like watch a murder that. mystery or something. Yes, murder mystery podcast. Oh, oh no, I'm gonna be into it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's already mur- on my list, but oh no, <laughs> a murder happens in their building and they come together to make a podcast about it as they explore who did the murder and so it's very very well done and funny and believable and just i just enjoy the hell out of it. And a lot of good actors involved as well a lot of actors of color just, too which is positive nice yeah. love it can i just say also i love that selena gomez is like acting again oh my i know God. she was so focused on her music career for a long yeah. time but yeah. the first time i saw her was on the disney channel that's right that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. and she was acting and i think she sang too in the show i don't remember she sang to you good for her no 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 in the show <laughs> I, I, I would die you. if Selena Gomez sang to me specifically. <laughs> I just sit there and sob the whole time. <laughs> this is something for <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, what are we off? Where are we off to next? We're talking about renewals. We're talking about also oh, spin-off series. So mm. it looks like WandaVision is getting a spin-off centered on the one and only Agatha Harkness. It was Agatha all along. And uh, <laughs> so this is a character that definitely had a huge part um, in, in the show WandaVision. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched WandaVision from Disney Plus yet. Ooh. But there is definitely a giant uh, season finale showdown between her and uh, Miss Scarlet Witch herself. So now, per Variety, this project is currently being described as a dark comedy, and um, she's going to get, Catherine Hahn is going to replace her role mm-hmm. as Agatha. So this is super exciting, and of course, the head writer for WandaVision, also serves as executive producer, uh, Jack Schaefer, will mm-hmm. be returning to Spearhead, this spinoff series, as the writer and the executive producer. And uh, so like, if it moves forward... We'll get to see Agatha. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't move forward mm-hmm. with it. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like Agatha is is so popular. She's so popular that they put her character at Disneyland in Avengers Campus during the Oogie Boogie Bash. And yeah. then the actor they hired to play her sounds exactly <laughs> like Catherine Hahn in the way she speaks. <laughs> um, so I don't know if this show trying to see because it's so new this news is so new i don't believe there is any sort of plot okay. but i'm going to guess yeah because even marvel has not given any sort of like official comment yeah. on the potential spin-off so this is all like 
deals are being made right now. Nothing's been confirmed and signed and finalized, but I would, I feel like this is a possibility. Um, I would love to see Agatha. We saw a little bit of her history, but I mm -hmm. love to see more. Yeah. And certainly she's a strong history in the comics, obviously being, you know, kind of really closely attached to the kids of Wanda and vision. Mm -hmm. So, and when last we saw her, she was, you know, under the spell at Westview stuck being the Agatha Harkness, uh, from uh, the earlier episodes of uh, WandaVision uh, and mm -hmm. not knowing that she is a witch. So I, who is going to break her out of that to start this it's process? It's Mephisto. It's yes, coming. It's Mephisto, finally. <laughs> We're finally getting Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we'll see We'll see how that plays out. I mean, Jock Schaefer, I like Jock Schaefer. Uh, I certainly enjoyed WandaVision. I, you know, but there are some questions. She also did the hustle, which wasn't that good. She did that Olaf's short story so we'll see if and mm -hmm. you know some people felt like the ending of wandavision didn't quite land as powerfully as it should have but that's that being said it's an overall great series and this is a writer who's growing with every project so let's see what she can do with this with her and Catherine hahn uh maybe this is uh, even more so her approach to the world so having someone like Catherine hahn essentially be the vehicle for her points of views and her her uh, approach to the character of agatha harkness i think will be very interesting to see so and and certainly Catherine hahn in essence almost overshadowed elizabeth olsman and powell bettany on their own show so no surprise that she's <laughs> yeah. getting a a spinoff series at all very exciting. So we'll yeah. keep our eyes out for, you know, any sort of updates for the show. So make sure you guys stay tuned, subscribe, yep. follow this channel so you don't miss out on any updates that we may have for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. What are, are we seeing people commenting on these? I want to read some comments if we've got any. Yeah, let's go to the comments. Uh, Let me yeah, just uh, scroll back up. Yeah. Do, 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 do. So let's see. Uh, Star Drew says uh, Magnum PI is the only thing I watch. Oh my god! <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> watching old school Sister Sister and Angel on Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't get those new streaming stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, six four six. Uh, Az Wright says John birthday present uh, on my to do list. Look oh, thank done. you, thank you very much. Look I what you've done. <laughs> Just something small. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, a boy. new ps5 uh let's see what uh let's see uh yeah Gandalf says he's happy excited for dune um yes. and we are too and, i like uh, this comment here from bruce bruce rock okay. ac says hbo had a chance to have another game of thrones level show with lovecraft country but they were too afraid of where they were possibly going with it misha green wasn't playing yeah. i agree with that comment okay. i would have loved to see how they were going to handle um like had Lovecraft Country gotten a second uh, season mm. because, oh, I don't want to spoil it just in case because it is relatively okay. newish. Ah, no, not really. It came up before WandaVision okay. to see what they were going to do without some of their leads, mm -hmm. right? Like how, how yeah. they were going to handle that going forward. And they definitely opened the door for a lot of possibilities. I would have loved to see more of Ruby, you know, well, to see, yeah, to kind of see what what did happen with her, what what wouldn't happen with her, but mm -hmm. also, unfortunately, we lost uh, the actor uh, Michael K. William. Yeah, Michael Kenneth Williams. Yeah. Yeah, we unfortunately lost him earlier this year, so he, you know, would sad that he. Let's just say they had a season two, he wouldn't be able to return. Yeah. yeah. Which is which is a huge bummer because I actually really I went from not liking his character too much to like really really liking his character by the end. Yeah. Yeah, fair so enough. There fair is enough. that. Zybo's was asking, that. "Have uh, have you watched For All Mankind on Apple?" I have not, but it is on my list. The space. I keep uh, hearing show. that it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've got to find my way. Or <sighs> man, one of the hardest things is, but I think ben, Wendy can certainly relate. You wake up and it's immediately like, okay, what do I have to watch today? What do I what do I have to record today? What do I have to make today? What do I have to yep. do? It, it's just constant every day, and so. Sometimes that little rebellious part of you is like, fuck this. I'm sitting here for three hours and playing my video game or I'm reading a book or I'm <laughs> going to drive or I'm doing something. I'm going to breakfast and listen to the rain. I'm not right. going to do this. You know, you just got to do those little things. But for all mankind is definitely on the list for sure. So, yeah, you have to do you have to take take, take the time for yourself. Can't always just work, work, work. Right. It's bad. Can't do that. It's bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right. Where are we off to uh, next, Wendy, as we move on to uh, this through the first block of stories here? 
Autobots, roll out. I picked this yeah. topic just for you because we know uh, you love Transformers. So it looks like they've released some new set photos from the upcoming film Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Uh, that's going to show some of the cars that's featured in this film. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first photo shows the Autobot vehicle with their like very the 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 colors that we know and then we see also the decepticons obviously a little bit darker in, yeah. in the way uh they look so i'm just always like really happy whenever we get to see these cars they're not transforming they they look like actual real picture cars that, that yeah. uh, stephen cable jr is sitting next to do any aside from bumblebee and optimus do any of the other uh, autobot vehicles stand out to you Oh, I, I loved the, uh, um, oh, well, above me, the off-road camera thing is pretty awesome. Yes. Camaro, rather. The off-road Camaro yes. is pretty awesome. Yeah, let me see if I can bring it up as a shared screen. Let me uh, do that real quick and see if I can. I think can. you can. Um, all right. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, where is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, there we go. There's Stephen Capel Jr. There, let, there. Me, let me make it bigger here. There you go. Uh, they're in Peru. Uh, where mm -hmm. they're shooting, and that's that's some great. I love the old VW bug that looks like something out of Lost. That old VW right? van there, <laughs> the motorcycle looks great. Love this is all old school stuff. So yeah. I dig the approach to it. I think that's an old. What is that? An old Porsche or Fiero, whatever that is. It's pretty cool. And then when you get to the Decepticon side of things, that is nasty good. That is right? some nasty good stuff there. So. I dig the approach. I dig the look of them. They are going back. And so clearly this is this is not a modern day film, it feels like. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're, so this is gonna be very interesting to see the aesthetic and the approach to it. But I think it looks pretty badass. And I love that truck. My lord, that black truck looks awesome. I had so. a feeling that's very like uh, <laughs> uh what what is that? Like Mad Max type. Yeah, it is a Mad Max type thing. Yeah, absolutely. So pretty cool. So the reason why I think that the cars look a lot more retro is because this movie is going to explore the origins of like yeah. when the Autobots first came to Earth. So they they got to look this way until you know then as they stand the the test of time they will like into right. more updated vehicles. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle this because there's been some Transformer films that I loved and then there's some Transformer films that I didn't love. Right. Um, so, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for this one because I really enjoyed like playing with the little toys when I was mm -hmm. little, watching the cartoon. Mm -hmm. Even though I went back and watched it like recently, just like a couple episodes, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't, this, is, this is my thing when people come and be like, oh, they really ruined the Transformers movies. Have you watched the app of the TV show? It's super cheesy, son. So, like, when people go like crazy the original, about it, original. Yeah, the original one from the 80s. It is, doesn't hold up that well to rewatch it. Let me just tell you that even the Transformers movie at times is like, what is happening here? You know, who is using the drugs on this set to create these tangent storylines within the movie? So, uh, but that's also the foundation of what people love. Uh, the foundation of people's love for Transformers is from those early uh, TV series. So I totally get it. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it just drives me nuts how people try to be like, oh, they ruined my childhood. <laughs> Transformers was like, Dude, watch those shows again. You know, come on. It's like watching the old He Man stuff. You're like, eh, come on. You know, let's be real. So. <laughs> uh, wait, I want uh, to say thank you to Bryant Brawler for oh. cheering your 100 bits and says, is this Transformers movie going to be a Bumblebee sequel follow uh, or a new start to the whole franchise? Ooh, I don't think it comes directly after mm -hmm. the Bumblebee by Travis Knight because if they're going by like when the Bumble when the Autobots came to Earth, then technically it would be before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm guessing. But uh, yeah, I have to kind of research into that to make sure it's not. I'm not saying that wrong. Yeah, I don't think it's a. A sequel at all i think it's just this is a, a whole new approach to the universe in a in at a different time and so mm -hmm. bumblebee can exist michael bay's transformers can exist and then mm -hmm. these can exist you know it's <clears throat> it's no coincidence that they're walking away with their next project from the michael bay approach to Transformers. even though he's producing this as well with other people and under his producing company it's still they're walking away from Bay's approach to it to try a new way into this franchise 
So I think that's the the what you're going to see here. So yeah, it's not a new start necessarily, but it mm -hmm. is a it's a bunch of newer characters that we have not seen, and so they're just fleshing out the universe even more. Yeah. yeah, I just hope that eventually we can get to the point where with Transformer films that we get to set like okay, we get to have them you know as like one, two, and three again because yeah. the last couple of them have been. Like obviously the Bumblebee one with Haley Seinfeld, Steinfeld, it was very much like a one-off. There's yes, no like before true. or after. It's a standalone true. film, and this one kind of feels the same way too. Uh, so I just hope we can get to the point where we get to continue the story. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Absolutely. So we'll see. We will. We, we will, will see. see. Um, all right, where shall we dive into next? Bum -ba -da -bum -bum, bum -bum 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 -ba -da -bum -bum. <laughs> Somebody got a Hollywood star, uh, Mr. James Bond himself, Daniel Craig, has received <laughs> his Hollywood Walk of Fame yeah. star. I'm actually surprised. I thought for some reason that he's had one. Oh, already. okay. Okay. Because uh, he's just, I just feel like, I don't know, maybe I thought it in my head and I mixed up one of the Bond premieres with like thinking that was a Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame star. But he has got one and quote mm. says, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but you know, it's an absolute honor to be walked all over in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And there you have it. You know, the man's put in his time playing, gave, giving us, I think five or six, five James Bond movies. He's yeah. got now his star that you can, if you're in LA, you can go. I don't even know exactly where it's placed, but um, there's a lot of things to look at on Hollywood. I was, I was just there. And I feel like, being so used to living in LA, like I'm no, I'm no longer, when I first moved to LA, when I would go to Hollywood for auditions or for anything like yeah. that, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this, look at that. And spend like a couple hours there. Now I'm just kind of like, excuse me, can you move out of the way? Like family's trying to take like lay on the floor, trying to take pictures next to a star. They're doing this thing. And I'm like, oh, excuse me. Like, excuse I'm like me. that asshole. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I've lost uh. all of the joy. <laughs> oh yeah. In my I, life. What I lived uh, close to Hollywood Boulevard uh, right around 2003 to 2006, 2007. Um, and yeah, that's basically where, in my mind, I lost all connection or love for tourists because literally they were just right around the corner from you all the time on Hollywood Boulevard. Because I was on Hawthorne right by that uh, oh. poster, like by that big, huge painting yeah. they have. I lived like yeah. two doors down at one of those townhouses. Gosh, um, was it noisy? Oh, well, it could get noisy at night for sure. But I was younger then, so I didn't give a shit. I would stay up till four That's in the true. morning, so it wasn't That's a big true. deal to me. But yeah, it, it would get crazy noisy. But you, I couldn't even walk over and go see a movie without you know, having to barrel through a bunch of tourists. <laughs> so although it was great to live like two two blocks down from Grauman's, it still was frustrating as hell. Or the El Cap, it still was frustrating yeah. as hell to kind of constantly have to navigate the tourists as you try to go and just walk into a movie theater so yeah it's i get I it trust skipped, me i get it <laughs> oh yeah i've skipped also like many a parties like house parties that people would be like oh yeah come to my house party i'm like great where is it they're like oh this and this and i'm like so in hollywood they're like yeah i'm like i am busy yeah go because i know <laughs> that parking is gonna be a bitch right when i go and like you can't find it or you have to read the 50 million signs that's posted and you're like, so street sweeping on Tuesday, two hour parking on this day and less permitted. And I'm just like, I can't park here. My car's not going to be here when I come back. It's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's crazy. But nonetheless, congratulations to Mr. Yes. James Bond, Daniel Craig, for getting that star on uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Even Rami Malek was there when he received yes. the star, says, uh, quote, it is a privilege to work with him, to watch him, and especially impactful to play opposite his most iconic James Bond in his last venture. Yeah. How nice. Yeah, very How kind of him. nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, Daniel Craig I, seems to be very humble in this. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I can't seem to find where it's at, so uh, I guess we'll have to walk through hollywood and find out where it's at next time <laughs> to i'm trying to look at the photos that yeah. that they've taken to try to pinpoint no like okay, no because they set out the there. star there for they set the, they're not going to go like down on some crappy area hollywood boulevard <laughs> they, they're going to do the ceremony in front of the code hours which is essence where they did hollywood highland They'll oh put that's the, true but that isn't where daniel craig's star is going to be so you know that's <laughs> 
I think is. Oh my god! So I really want. I'm so curious where yeah. it's going to be because he just got it. Yeah. On Wednesday. So okay, wait. Oh. Appropriately named number seven zero zero seven Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. right next to the late Roger Moore. Oh. So wherever Roger Moore's is. Okay. Wherever that, I don't even know where I don't, I think I've walked past Roger Moore's before, but I couldn't, couldn't tell you exactly where it was. Okay. That's it looks like it's over by Amoeba. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Over by Amoeba on Hollywood Boulevard. Wow. It goes that far seven. down? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So to, it was the 2704, 2704th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And it is at 7007 Hollywood Boulevard. And you're right, placed right next to the late Roger Moore. And that's right there by Amoeba Records. So if you go to Amoeba right out front and make sure you pass that staples, you'll see Hollywood <laughs> Walk of Fame. That's, 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 there is a staples there. <laughs> so you can run oh that chair gosh. right over Roger. Uh, right there, over you, there you go. Take a picture of <laughs> little, little, little sidewalk <laughs> selfie with it. See if families do it all the time. Do this. <laughs> oh my god all right uh let's keep going here we got about 23 minutes left in the show thank you yes to uh um uh brian brawler again who said cheers is this oh yeah we already i already asked that there... i thought you said another one bryant but i'm maybe there I'm was missing... a, about the blue and silver car just yeah, a couple down from that first one it. is it okay it's under the little three it. emojis that's like the finger hearts yeah, I can't seem to see it. I don't know why it's not showing up here. So weird. All right. But uh, yes, thank you, uh, Brian. You asked, is that blue and silver car jazzed? I hope so. Ooh. And I hope it isn't one with any kind of jazz, stereotypical, racist kind of voice that they used last didn't time. So. That, yeah, I was going to say, didn't they do that before? And it yeah, didn't go, did not did. go over well. <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. Don't do that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Don't do um, it. It's not good. Um, all right, let's move on to our next thing here, Wendy, as we're uh, barreling towards the end of the show here. What, what are we up to next? We're going to head into hashtag trending. No, and of trending. course, kicking it off today. Trending. We need like a little, little like a little kicker, a little stinger. We do. We're to, trying to, to get Tushka to do it, for God's sake. sake. Come on, Tushka. <laughs> get on it. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> do a great job, Tushka. Do yeah, a great job. a great job. You're doing a great job. For today's... <laughs> <laughs> For today's K-pop corner, I thought we'd uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming, because we touched on this, I think, last week. Okay. Um, BTS is holding a concert right here in California, four days only later on this year. Uh, so tickets have gone on sale and who I didn't even attempt because I knew it was, I don't usually have luck. When it comes to like, you know, new merch drops, fighting for concert tickets online when there's tons of other people doing it. I just yeah. don't have the best luck. So I didn't even try. I think if I really want to go, I might just like walk and show up there the day of and like see if, if anybody wants to give up their tickets. Because that happened. Not give up for free, <laughs> but like they sell it for the price they bought. Uh, right. And you can usually haggle a little bit because they're like they're trying to get rid of it. So but uh it was a struggle for a lot of the army trying mm -hmm. to get these tickets from Ticketmaster from, you know, and there were like PSAs for how to get your ticket, call your credit card company and let them know you're about to make a really large purchase. So they don't decline it. So your card don't get declined when you in fact do can get your tickets that you right. want to um, like, you know, things like make sure everything else that's turned off. If you just oh, don't overload your Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, and know, you know, know what seats you want and have like, you know, have an account on Ticketmaster could help with the checkout prog process. I've had personally had friends who have taken care of like following all of those steps and still was kicked out of the queue, oh. was not able to get the ticket that they were still able to get the ticket, wow. but they weren't able to get the ticket in the seat that they wanted. Like some people really will sacrifice, you know, a big chunk change because they haven't seen BTS in person in years because mm -hmm. of COVID um, wanting to buy these tickets. And they're like, you know what? I've been saving. I want a floor seat. I want the VIP so I can go into listen to because there's a special ticket where you can go in and actually be in the stadium watching them do their sound check, which is very right. intimate, really, really cool. Um, and, you know, it's obviously way less people. So you can really you kind of feel like it's, you're getting a little bit of like one on one time with with the group. Uh, and just a lot of people were not able to get their hands on tickets, mm -hmm. which is so disappointing. Like my heart 
ached for people. There's just the whole Twitter thread, hashtag BTS Concert LA, saying yeah. you are now in the queue. There's a screenshot of that. You are now in the queue. There is a to- uh, an approximately 2,000 plus people ahead of you. Oof, wow. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. And there's people who is uh, on, like, we're able to go through the queue and try to pick, like, okay, this is the seat that I want, and it's blank, and they mm-hmm. can't click on it. They can't select it. <laughs> so it was a mess. And I for personally had not great experiences trying to buy um, tickets to a Blackpink concert mm. with Ticketmaster. Okay. It was really, really difficult for some reason. And, you know, so I kind of, like, it was me and Emma Five were going to go mm. together, and we just <laughs> we just gave up. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave up. And there's people that's, like, you get, like, there's some things you have to do to, like, you have, like, the VIP army uh, yeah. fan club status. So you can kind of get the tickets first. And it just, a lot of it was messed up. So I hate that it was kind of a crap show for all the dedicated fans who are just dying to see BTS. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry about that. Uh, who's our friend? Uh, who's the? Um, she's a critic. Oh God, I can't. Inca, Inca's. Uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, Laura Siri Cool. Yeah, Laura Siri Cool. I, I, I've been living and dying through her posts <laughs> about trying to get BTS concert tickets. She is a hell of a follow in her BTS obsession, and so, and you're the one that like woke me up to what BTS was. So seeing her post about it and her desire to get those tickets and the frustration she felt uh, through that whole process was hilarious to me. It was a great tweet uh, for sure. I mean, yeah. she got tickets. Yeah, she. I followed her IG story and she, she did get tickets. Was, okay, she got them, but it's not the ones that she wanted. Like she was saving up for for the floor seats and get to get the sound check and. And it wasn't because she wasn't able to get in. She got in and then Ticketmaster screwed up. And like, I think at one point kicked her out. And I think even her credit card, she did the whole, the steps, like call your credit card company. So, you know, like they're aware that you're going to make a big uh, purchase. And what happened? Her credit card was like, hey, we're detecting a fraud. She's like, no, it's me. (laughs) It's me. Give me my tickets. (laughs) She just wants to see Jin. (laughs) brilliant i felt bad so much fun yeah it was a, it was a hell of a journey that's for sure um yeah <laughs> so good luck to everybody trying to get those tickets and uh, yeah good luck to all of you i will be cheering you on from the sideline i will not be going to the concert uh, because i think i'd be sitting in that line crying yeah. about how frustrated that i'm i am when i have you know a specific desire to sit in a, se- a specific section and not being able to do so and shout out to all you scalpers who are going to make a lot of money off these tickets. <laughs> Probably out of, off of me because I think that's what I don't recommend it, but it's I, it's I'm just saying it's a method. I don't condone it. I don't um, do it happily. <laughs> all right, let's keep going here, Wendy. You got some Walt Disney's <coughs> sorry stories to tell us. Yeah. I wanted to bring this up because you and I both are theme park. We've, you know, yes. had experience working in theme parks before. So yeah, there's a whole Twitter thread going on here. Some things you didn't know about working at Disney World. So what happened was they uh, sent a reporter mm-hmm. uh, to work as a cast member at Walt Disney World. And what? here is what oh. he has learned. Which okay. is like, I was like, oh, that's so interesting. So the article is titled 11 Unmagical Secrets I Learned While Working at Ooh. Disney. Uh, so let me just scroll down to some of the okay. things. Um, so one of the things that you have to know is you, and this is Disney specific. This is not like, I don't think Universal has the same set of rules, guidelines, yeah. if you will. But uh, if you are working for Disney and if you play a face character, that um looks like a disney princess or prince or character um you don't actually play him or her you are friends with them that is the the proper terminology so let's say if i played mulan yeah at disneyland i can't ever say publicly i play mulan i can say oh i'm friends with mulan i'm best friends with her (laughs) and that's kind of the quote that's like the the secret code word for Mm -hmm. that let me see what else uh Oh, there's this. Okay, here's an interesting one. So yeah. there's a Mary Poppins one where I'm trying to find it. So apparently, families will leave their try to leave their younger kids their the drop off yeah. their kids with Mary Poppins. <laughs> I you can, can watch say, her, right? <laughs> can I say, having dated someone for a few months and lived with that person? Who was both Mary Poppins and 
Cruella DeVille, oh. she told me on a number of occasions that people would leave their kids with her um, and they'd have to use their brakes sometimes because the parents wouldn't come back for it. They have to walk <gasps> the kids over to the Lost Children Center um, and those poor actors wouldn't get a break sometimes because they would have to walk those kids over there and make sure they were okay. So yeah, I can't believe that's of... true. It literally yeah. says oh, that yeah. in this article. Oh really? Oh here, stay with this. <laughs> yeah, here, here's the quote. I found it. So adults often brace, uh, embrace their inner child uh, or inner children at the park rather than watch their own. This is from the article, not me saying that. Um, so it's like, here, stay with her. She's gonna care, take care of you. She's a governess. <laughs> yes. yes. And it inevitably, Mary Poppins has to stay in character despite missing yeah. breaks to take. The, uh, the the kids who has been left to the lost children's yeah. center. It's madness. It's madness. I cannot believe that. And it's just yeah. like a whole, you know, slew of things that I, that I couldn't. And this is having worked at Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. So we've experienced some stuff and you, you're a face character yeah. at Universal. Yeah. So, yeah. so you face to face with guests where I was oh, yeah. at least, you know, in a costume and I like was not allowed to speak as a, as a, as a costume character. Mm -hmm. So I, I at least didn't have to like improv. So I can't imagine, you know, finding uh thing, things like this. And there's also a thing called, you don't want to be a treasured guest. So apparently, <laughs> uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. It's hot, humid. Everybody needs a sugar bump. My skipper training on Jungle Cruise Attraction, a favorite place to sit down and recharge. It's also the holy grail of dad jokes since <laughs> the skippers on the Jungle Cruise also double as like comedians. So uh, in their way is, uh, quote, when someone answers a business call or if a teenager's zoned out on TikTok, I usually will put in a joke request for them to order me a pizza. <laughs> that's that's very funny. And I just wanted to, to, again, put this in there because I thought you and I have seen a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Work, working at a theme park. But some of the stuff that I am reading, I had no idea that people would yeah. leave their children with a yeah. character. What is that? That's laziness. <laughs> yeah. And, and like as a joke, I get it. Right. As a right. joke, you, you leave for three minutes and you come back. Ah, ha, ha, it's funny. It's not funny when you make an employee miss their break because they don't get to make that up. They're just, right. they're just, they're done. And those parents hit a wall and they're like, I can't do it anymore. Please don't ask me. Take my kids from me. I want to go and be a child again before I. This had... reminds me of that one mom. Do you remember? She like went off on social media yelling how about how childless millennials should not be welcome to Disneyland or Disney World. <laughs> do you remember that? And I'm like, yes. oh, she's talking about me. <laughs> I was like, no, man, you chose to have them. You got to take responsibility for them. That's the game. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. Um, that all right. That. Let's uh, move on to one more thing before we jump into our review and then wrap things up here. We got about 12 minutes left here. The uh, Christmas movies are coming in hot. What's this all about, uh, Wendy? We haven't even had Halloween or Thanksgiving yet. But yes, <laughs> like you said, they're coming in hot to Netflix. The Christmas yes. movies and the shows. Get your hot cocoa, your snowballs. Get them ready because there's going to be a whopping 28 new 20 Christmas movies and eight. shows coming to Netflix oh. this year. Uh, so we're getting a bunch of, um, <laughs> a couple of fan favorites that are coming back. So right. I believe the Princess Switch is coming oh, back for its God. third one with Vanessa Hudgens. We've got a Castle for Christmas with Brooke Shields and oh, mm. Carrie Ellis. Ooh. Nice. Ooh, as you wish all the way. Yes, that's what it should be called. Yeah. Anything with, with Carrie is in it. Uh, there's also a single all the way that's going to hit Netflix on December 22nd. Yeah. Um, and I am just, my God, there's so many movies. And I you can bet your butt I am watching every single one of them. You know, I don't know when I got to be so obsessed with, with Christmas movies. There's yeah. a certain trope that follows. Like maybe it's the formula that I'm comfortable with, right? There's usually yeah. like a romance or some sort of like family heartwarming yeah. message at the end of like unity and acceptance and, you know, embrace each other for who you really are and, yeah. and this and that. Uh, but there is always the trope of, you know, the snowfall, somebody's alone and then magic happens. And then there's that first snowball fight that makes you fall in love. And then you drink the chocolate and yep. it's that that's it. And it's comfortable. I like cuddling with my blankets and having a hot cocoa myself. 
as I watch through these movies. They're not, I don't love them all. No, no. How Sometimes I watch and I'm like, what the crap is this? <laughs> but when I watch them all anyways, yes, 100%. You know, last year I tried to do 25 days of Christmas special where I would review one movie for 25 days. I remember each, that. And that was a train wreck. I just could not keep up and it eventually just stopped because I was going to blow out <laughs> completely. But maybe because of you know the connections with Netflix now, maybe I'll be able to get these things a little bit early so I can record mm -hmm. my reviews early and maybe I'll try again. Maybe I will try a second year to do 25 Days of Christmas and actually do it this time uh, and uh, and watch these movies ahead of time and record the reviews ahead of time. Because I'm like you. I love Christmas movies. It drives my girlfriend crazy. She's not she does not like Christmas movies, but what? we've set up what? the office where I can sit here and watch them, you know, so I am good to go. Yeah, we, we you know we're just two different people. She's a she sweetheart, like Christmas but it's movies? not her jam. She likes she likes certain Christmas movies, but she doesn't like it's a wonderful life. It's not her jam, but she loves Elf. So there are certain ones that oh, she's into Elf. and certain ones not into, but the cheesiness of these movies, she won't watch. I mean, if they were British, like the Great British Baking Show Christmas special, she's totally going to watch that. <laughs> she will watch that. <laughs> so, but the other stuff, no, that's not her jam. So, Amazing. Uh, but yeah, I love it. Twenty, And that's just on Netflix. Holy shit. That's just on Netflix. I don't it's know not how even many, the Hallmark stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how many Hallmark are coming. There's some Hulu ones. Uh, and, and also Netflix announced like one of the Christmas movies will be a, a gay Christmas movie, which of course last year Hulu did their first one with, uh, I think it was Hulu or Amazon prime with, uh, uh Mackenzie Davis and, uh, Oh yes, oh. that's right. Oh, who is in that? Yeah, who am I forgetting? Oh, Mo oh boy. Oof, I feel bad. Christmas movie. Oh, well. It's not Rooney Mara. Kristen, was it Kristen Stewart? Kristen Stewart. Kristen and Stewart. I think it was Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis. Yes. I'm Happy, sure. yes, Kristen. Yeah, Kristen. Yeah. No, oh, Kristen so Stewart. Yeah. No, right? Oh, happiest Chris season. Yeah, happiest season. Yep, yep. Yeah, That's that was cool. so cute. It was a good movie. I actually liked that. I movie, enjoyed so. that very yep. much. There you go. Uh, right. yeah, I know. I agree with you. What is of Ames? The last year has gone like a flash. You're right. We're already walking into October, we're almost done. I mean, we're almost into the Yikes. second week of October, and we're, Christmas will be here before you know it. Halloween will be here before we know it. Thanksgiving will be here before you know it. New Year's will be here before you know it. Uh, and then we're into 2022. My God, craziness. Um, <laughs> all right. Anyway. All right. We got about, uh, what, seven minutes left. So, Wendy, let's jump into our non-spoiler review for The Last Duel. You saw it last night. I saw yes. it a couple days ago. What an incredible wow. movie. Powerful movie. Moving movie. It, you are going to go through the ringer of this thing. Ridley Scott directed it. Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Jod Driver Jodim Comer, and Ben Affleck. What are your just overall non-spoiler feelings about the movie? Uh, I didn't realize until I sat down to watch the film, it was broken up in chapters, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a multi-perspective point of view yeah. type of a, a telling the story. And I really enjoyed that because I was wondering how they were going to play it out. Yeah, uh, And I liked seeing that. And the movie kind of in its three chapters, three acts, mm -hmm. goes from slightly light, a little almost in the character himself, for yeah. the Carouge character, Matt Damon's character, a little bit more of a caricature character of what I thought he was yeah. his his character was going to be mm -hmm. from what I saw in the trailer to you know hit, but obviously he's the hero of his own story because they yeah. all um respectively Matt Damon, Adam Driver, and Jodie Comer tells their stories from their own perspective. So of course everybody's going to be the the hero of their own story, especially if you take into the the personality uh, of Matt Damon's character, uh, Jean de Carouge. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to watch how that played out. And then when the second chapter came around and it was time for Jack's story, who was played by uh, Adam Driver, you kind of mm -hmm. go, oh, I see what they're doing here. So I was very interested. And yet the same, I was anticipating yet dreading that third act because yeah. I knew what it what it was going to be. And that was, I think, my favorite act, but also the hardest one for me to watch. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, but yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. With oh, no, it's fine. I was just going to say Jodie Comer. I knew she was going to deliver. I knew they yeah. were all going to, to deliver, but she has this way of acting where she doesn't go too big and she doesn't mm -hmm. go too small. Yeah. Uh, just everything she does. And she's so versatile because I've seen her I started watching her in Killing Eve. Like I started that show yeah. because I love Sandra Oh and I stayed for Jodie Comer because yeah. I was like, oh, these two together is a must 
watch. And after I learned about her, then we saw her in Free Guy, which is a completely different character <laughs> from her character in Killing Eve. Yeah. And then from Free Guy to Marguerite, who is another complete character. Obviously, this is a purity piece. So, you know, the acting is slightly different, but she is yeah. just so raw um, and incredibly talented. And I really enjoyed the, the multi perspective uh, way of telling the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tweeted about it. Just said they use the Rashomon effect so well in this movie. Um, oh, that, yes. That's, that's essentially what you're seeing all three, three different takes about an incident. Um, uh, yes. And, uh, you know, the Matt Damon uh, chapter lays the groundwork for the most part of all the characters and what happened and what happened. Then mm -hmm. you get the, the Adam driver chapter is the longest driver, uh, longest chapter of the movie where you get his point of view and his perspective and his experience. And then you get uh, the sexual assault, which is really brutal. I, warning now to any of you yeah, who have an issue warning. watching that, it will trigger you for sure. And then we get Marguerite's point of view of everything that happened. And then, of course, we get a final kind of judgment, so to speak. But overall, this is a film that really puts the world of men on trial and their ego and their power and their misogyny and their uh just d diminishment or dehumanizing of women in that society and you will find a lot of comparisons topical comparisons to how some the world has been working for women ever since in before that and after that and even into our society nowadays how it, mm -hmm. how sexual assault rape um accusations are treated by a lot of men in our society men in power in our society i mean you can't ignore Greg Abbott stupidly saying that he's just going to get rid of all the rapists in Texas. That's how he's going to stop people from having unwanted pregnancies from rape. Maybe one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. So it's just the, yeah. the, these things you say, you're seeing men in power constantly uh, seeing women uh, or belittling women or dehumanizing women and seeing their their uh, the approach to their place in the world as something to be of use to men and nothing else. And the yes. film conveys that in powerful ways that although are topical, they still feel very much rooted in that time as well, which I think was a really good job by Ridley Scott and the screenwriters. Yes, ben Affleck and Damon and Rachel. Yes. And did you know they hired, and I can't remember her name, but they hired a specifically female writer to write the third yes. act from a female's yes. perspective, which that I was appreciate brilliant. That was so brilliant. much. Yeah, because yeah. you have to tell you're telling the story from Marguerite's perspective, so it right. it's, you know seems like an obvious choice. But I like that they took the attention to detail to do that. And then just you know while we're on the subject of of Ben Affleck, yeah. this character is not like the one that I thought that he was going to play <laughs> at all. He plays Pierre, yeah. and yeah. pretty much he didn't have too big of a part <laughs> in the first or third act, but definitely yeah. uh, you know uh, more heavily featured in the second act. Yeah, uh, and just a scene stealer, man. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the writer is Nicole Holofsener. That's who wrote it. Uh, that third act, and you're right. Ben Affleck is it, it, every scene he's in when he's allowed to kind of spread his wings is very. There's just a confidence and a swagger to him in here uh, that is fun to enjoy. And he probably was very happy to not play either of the two weightier male roles. So he could just sit back, relax, and have some fun uh, have at some everyone fun. else's yeah. expense and and bust his ball, bust their balls. So yeah, it was good stuff for sure. Yeah. So definitely watch yeah. it. I would recommend it. I give it, what'd you give it? Like four? I had like around four for that one. So. Yeah, I think so. Just about. It's it's yeah. excellent. It's really excellent. But again, yeah. trigger warning for those who, oh, yeah. who ha um you know, just go, just so you know, going in that they definitely talk about the very sensitive topic of yeah. sexual assault. And they show it a couple of times. Yes. So yeah. Just be so ready that for was that if you have a Not warning. easy to sit through. No, for that sure. Part, I'm but sure. important for storytelling. Absolutely. I'm, I found myself staring at the ground the second time because I'm like, I just, I can't, I don't want to watch The this, second so. time is worse. The second, yes. I, I almost, I, I, I felt like I needed to get up and leave. I actually yeah. almost did. Hmm. But I was like, no, I, I got, I got to stay through. It's essential see. because that's the woman's point of view. And it's yes. essential to see how she experiences it beat by beat and the horror of it. And that to me, I just was like, oh my God, this is so tough, but also truthful. So you have to honor that. And yeah, so I'm yeah. glad you- Ugh, I almost want to say a spoiler because there was a line that Matt Damon says to her after mm. in yeah. the third act, but I was I don't want to say it because if I yeah. say it here, it'll lose its impact when you hear it again in the, in the movies. Exactly. But yeah. when he said it, the whole theater went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> Correct response. <laughs> oh collective collective face palm i feel like across what the theater wrong the with you? i was like i was like effective 
Uh, oh, all right, boy. we got to get out of here. Uh, this has been an yes. hour long show here. Uh, Travis Earl says, I had to create a Twitch account. I had to download yes. the app. I had to Google how to chat. But here I am finally. Thank you, Travis. Thanks for Thank coming you. in for the last minute of the show. We appreciate it. Join us again next week when we're going to go live on Twitch again. We're doing it. And, and for those of you who maybe don't know, what I do is take the video and then re-upload it on YouTube as well. So for people who can't get on Twitch, you can watch it on YouTube later on today, this show. So thank you all so much for watching it. Wendy, thanks again for another fun show. Where can they find you and everything you got going on? You can find me, uh, just my name here under all the social media. So Instagram, Twitter, you can find me on The Movie Couple on YouTube and Wendy Lee Zaney, twitch.tv slash Wendy Lee Zaney right here on Twitch. Uh, there you go. And you can find me at the Roka on Twitter and on Instagram. And remember to subscribe not only to the Outlaw Nation on Twitch, but when I put this on YouTube, subscribe to that channel as well and hit that bell button on YouTube so you see when we're dropping all the new content. But if you haven't subscribed to Twitch and you're watching this on YouTube, maybe we'll motivate you to and head on over to uh, subscribe or follow uh, uh, the Outlaw Nation channel and the Movie Cup channel as well here on Twitch. Um, there we go. All right, that's it from us. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Have an awesome weekend. Go and see some movies. Lamb is out there. No Time to Die is out there. Go and see those movies and have some fun. Enjoy them. And there's a bunch of stuff like Foundation still going on. The Ted Lasso season finale for season two dropped. So go and watch that. And Star Wars Vision still out there for some of you. I know a lot of you haven't finished it. So go and finish watch it this weekend as well. <laughs> uh, all right, we're out of here. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Much love. And thank you, Brian Brolin, for all the bits. Much love to you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.